All right, uh, yeah, we did, we did. All right, so I'm gonna show you a graph, all right? And I'm gonna give you some background for it, and then we're gonna talk about some things that happen on this graph. And I want you, first of all, to look at it. Let me see. This is a coordinate plane. I'm gonna say that this is height. I'll get it. I'm gonna say that this is time. And whenever I graph it, it looks something like this. So my first question to you is, is this a function? Yes or no? Why? No, it's not because it's like a line. It is a function. That line, that line is the axis. What? If you look, what test can I use to see if it's vertical line test? That's exactly right. It never touches any vertical line more than once. So yes, it is a function. Okay. What? What is? We'll leave it. We'll leave it with that. What do you call? Let's see if you remember that. These points right here where it is touching the line. Those are called points. They are points. What kind of points? It starts with an I. Intercepts. Intercepts. Good job. Intercepts are where the graph intercept crosses an axis, okay? This would be the x-intercept because it's where it's crossing the x-axis. Therefore, this one would be the what? Y. Okay. So let me just define, and this is kind of what we're doing in this section is we are looking at some um, aspects of functions and their graphs, okay, and what they do. So intercept simply means where the graph crosses the axis. It can be either x or y. Now I want you to think about this with me for just a minute. Let me give you the background of this graph. Let me read you a little um, blurb while you copy. This graph represents the height of a launched object. So, this is a physics problem. The height, the graph shows the height of an object as a function of time. Would this be linear or nonlinear? So, linear, does it look like a line? Nonlinear, it does not look like a line. Nonlinear. Linear is going to look like this or like this. Okay, this is non-linear because it does not look like a line whenever it's graphed. Um, any kind of curves that you see make it non-linear. Tell me, now remember y is height and time is x, right? What do these intercepts mean? Now think, the height of a launched object, so something you throw, okay? Let's even say that this is 5, 10, 15, 20. We'll say this is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Tell me what that y-intercept means. You're exactly right. Good job. Maybe somebody 5 feet tall threw the object. They sure well, but if you think when you throw, well, I guess you do kind of throw over your head sometimes. They didn't throw over their head. Maybe it was an underhanded toss. Okay. So, but what we're getting at is this intercept, this intercept would represent the starting height. What is my time at the starting height? Zero. My time is zero. 
Now look at the x-intercept. What does that represent, where it crosses that x-axis? I hear four. That means what's four? Okay, so four, we'll say four seconds later. But what does it represent? When it stops, the height is what? The height is what? Ending, ending meaning it's what? Zero. What is at height zero? The ground. This is representing where it hits the ground. My height is zero. Now notice something. At the y-intercept, x is zero, right? At the y-intercept, what happens? The x is zero. Do you see what's happening there? Each intercept, the other variable is zero. Okay, that's an important, in fact, let's write that. At the y-intercept, x is zero. This is my y-intercept. My time, which is my x, is zero. At the x-intercept, the y is zero here. Okay, That is the most basic definition of an intercept, algebraically, is the other, the x is zero or the y is zero. Okay. All right, let's look at one more. Actually, let me show you something else with these. When we have a graph, and I'm going to draw a slightly different graph here. I'm going to do... Function, yes or no? No. Defend your answer. It passes the vertical line test. It is a function. The vertical line test. If it touches more than one point, um, then it's not a function. This one's different, and it's only slightly different. Tell me how it's different. It's starting at zero. What does that mean? It's starting from the ground. I don't know what's launching it up from the ground. Maybe there's like a mole or something that's coming up. And no, it's a nuclear missile. Oh, my goodness. Uh-huh. Oh, I know what, like a stomp rocket. My kids had those whenever they were little. That's true. That's probably what it is. We'll call this a stomp rocket. Y'all know what he's talking about? No. It's got like a tube, hook two in there. Yeah. All right, so it starts out on the ground, and then it goes up. All right. What? So that's the difference in my intercepts, right? Everybody sees? This graph is also special. It's special sh 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 because it shows what we call line symmetry. What do you think that means, that it has line symmetry? Yes, George. <laughs> if I put a line somewhere on this graph here, it makes it the same on either side. It has line symmetry. Okay. Yeah, each side is symmetrical. Okay, it's the same on both sides. All right, those are easy examples so far. Let me get to some other things. Put the phone away. And let's talk about some characteristics. You need a lot of room on this to be able to go in and, and write and... David, yeah. function no, or not? Nah? That's not a function. Why? Okay. 
vertical line tends to touch it twice. Where does it touch it twice on the vertical line? <laughs> Do you see why it is a function? Okay. This is a function. They can get quite funky. Okay. But this is a function. How many how many y intercepts do you see on this function? One. No. I hear one, I hear two. One. Y intercepts. Where's my y axis? This is y and this is x. You're exactly right. This is a y intercept. How many x intercepts do you see? Notice here that it can be both. And the only time it can be both is when it goes through one special point. What point is that? The origin, the middle, the origin. All right, we're going to talk about several different aspects of this, so stay with me. I'll probably have to do another graph to show you. In fact, let me go ahead and do that so you can see, so we don't get confused. Let's talk first about positive and negative. So I'm going to take this same graph. We've already talked about the intercepts. <clears throat> Positive occurs above the x-axis. And negative, we consider the function itself to be negative below the x-axis because we're really looking at the y values. When y is negative, it's negative. When y is positive, it's positive, OK? So looking at this, how many areas, or actually tell me this, where does it change from being positive to negative or negative to positive? Where does it change from being positive to negative or negative to positive? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. It changes at the x-intercepts. Do we all see that? Okay. This area here would be considered what? Positive. Because it's above How about, all right, here's the next x-intercept. So from this one to this one. Negative. Because it is below the x-axis. Now look at the next x-intercept. From this one to this one, positive. Because it is above the x-axis. And then from this one to the end, Negative, that's exactly right. From here to the end would be negative because it is below. Does that make sense? Okay. We call the whole thing negative or the whole thing positive between those intervals whenever it's above or below. All right. Let's look at increasing and decreasing. The key to increasing versus decreasing is to look left to right. This will make sense in just a minute. Now I put new batteries in an old one. I had to send my other one back to Amazon. It didn't work. Here's my same graph. 
start the furthest left you can go. All the way over here. The very top. Okay. The top Correct. But let's think about this. If I'm increasing, I'm going up. And if I'm decreasing, I'm going down. So as I go left to right, am I increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Decreasing because I'm going down. Do you see that? Yeah. All right. So this area why am I so, is decreasing, right? And it continues to decrease, decrease, decrease right here. It stops decreasing, and what happens? It starts increasing. And as I track this way, I'm going up, 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 up. Even though it's ever so slightly, I'm still going up. Right here, it stops. And it just decreases again. And it continues to decrease forever and ever and ever, right? Do we see that? All right. So these points... These stopping points that you mentioned are very important. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very important. These are called extreme points. And we have some different types. We have maximums. And we have minimums. Which one do you think this is? Mm -hmm. Come on. Why? Below, right? You're exactly right. This would be what we call a minimum. It's a low point on the graph. It's where it changes directions. It stops decreasing and it starts increasing. What do you think this one's called? A maximum. It looks like the top of a mountain, right? We call these relative Because they may not be the absolutely lowest point or the absolutely highest point on the graph, but they, they do top out or bottom out at those points. They change direction, okay? So sometimes we'll call maxes and mins um, turning points because it turns direction, okay? Or an even fancier word, points of inflection where it changes, okay? Um. <clears throat> Let's analyze a graph and see what happens. Let's do one from beginning to end and then I'll set you loose. Let's see what kind of got. CJ, how many y-intercepts do you see? <laughs> is this a function? This is not a function. It is. It doesn't matter. Vertical. Oh. But, but David, how many x-intercepts do you see on this graph? One, two, three, and four. Maximums do you see? All right, so I see one relative max. This one is what we call an absolute max because it is absolutely. Now, here's the thing you can only have one absolute at most, but you don't have to have any. Okay? But you're right, that is the maximum, but it's not relative, it is the maximum, the highest point, okay? Um, how many minimums?
minimums do you see? There's one. Is it relative or absolute, do you think? Relative. Why is it relative? The, those arrows on the end means that this graph always goes down. The arrows are not minimums. Don't circle those as minimums. They're not. They just tell you that the graph goes on forever. Um, tell me from left to right, am I increasing or decreasing to my first point? Increasing. Good job. How about the second set? How about the next one? It is a roller coaster. And then the last one is decreasing. Oh, my God.